Hello fellow miniature painters, I'm Kuro Cleanbrush and today I'm going to teach you how to paint some red non-metallic metal. Alright, so before you get started, the first real challenge in doing any non-metallic metal is deciding on what you want to use for your color palette. As you can see here, I've chosen a variety of Reaper paint colors that go from very, very dark brown, almost black, in the brown liner, up through some brown reds, then starting into orange, and finally to a yellow off-white, and then a very pure white for the highest highlights. You can see my palette here, and I have all the different uh, paint pools that I'm going to be using already spread out and uh, thinned to the to the uh, consistency that I want to use with them. And the top row of paint puddles is all the pure colors, straight from the droppers, uh, diluted with water of course, but the pure colors. And then b the bottom row is all the half steps, the 50-50 mixes between the, the colors that we're going to be using. So, all right, that's that's enough background. It's time to actually put a paintbrush to miniature, right? Obviously, the first thing I have to do, and this will be the real challenge, is moving this guy around and painting at the same time, is base coat this. So, I'm going to start with our Carnage Red, and just real quickly give this two or three um, base coat layers. So we're going to try to make this plate look very much like the cod piece. It has a very similar shape, and you can see how I've kind of decided already that the uh, light is coming from the upper right of the miniature. I tease that I do that because I'm right-handed and it's just easy for me to do it that way, but that there's a lot of truth to that. So we will start with the bright upper face, and we're going to start, uh, we'll start with this one working into the shadow. Now I'm going to go grab a little bit of my 50-50 Bloodstain Red Carnage Red, wipe it off all nice on my finger, and well, we're going to pick about one third of the way up the this face. And we really want to keep a nice triangle look going on here. You can see how I, I made a slant with that that edge, or hopefully you can see how I made a slant. There we go. I made a slant with that edge. It's not blending very well right now, but don't worry, we'll go back through and we'll fix that up um, with a little bit of the mid-tone. Right now, we just need to block out the colors, see what's playing nicely with each other and what isn't playing nice, and then we can move on. So clean the brush. Now we're going to grab a little bit of the pure uh, bloodstain red. Had to look up the paint pot for a second. This is just going to be drawn farther towards that bottom edge and still keeping kind of that uh, nice triangular marking going. So I believe you can see just fine and I can see just fine. Let's try that. We're going to draw it, draw it down a little bit. There we go starting to get darker. The secret with all your non-metallic metals is to go very dark and very light, right? Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think you can see it okay in the camera. But now it's time to go for our 50-50 mix of blood stain and brown liner and draw just even farther towards the bottom of this. Wiping things off on my thumb, getting the picture all right. Okay, we can both see that. I may have brought that one up a little bit too far. That's okay. We'll be able to go back and, and fix and fix that with a little bit of the middle color. So I'm going to grab the pure brown liner and put that down in the very bottom corner. Just try to make sure we can both see here. A 
There we go, nice and very dark. Now, we kind of need to make sure that everything's blended nicely. So I'm going to go back through with just a little bit of the colors that aren't working here. I need to take a close look, forgive me if I get in the camera here. Um, we need a little bit just to just between the uh, blood stain and the brown liner just not because we really don't have a good blend but because we lost a little bit of our triangle there I'm trying to make sure you can still see this there we go that brings us back in pretty good shape. That's how we want to be. And then um, we needed a little bit between the, let's see, hopefully you can see that. There we go. We needed a little bit between, or well, of pure, uh, pure blood stain, I guess. Often this is going to take you several layers and this is just playing back and forth with it until you get it exactly the way you want it. And now because I chewed up a little bit of my my boundary with the 50-50 uh, bloodstain carnage, I'm going to grab that again. And begin applying that to fix our little seam here. There we go. I'm liking the lines. We got nice sharp lines there. We do have a little bit way too harsh of a transition between our darks and our midtone though. So now I'm going to grab the midtone. And here's where red is actually really nice. Red doesn't cover anything, right? Which makes it very frustrating to base coat with. But it doesn't cover anything. So it's uh, nice and translucent for blending purposes. So I'm going to try to get... There we go. There we go. You can see that. And just dab it along the edge here. Or you can see we, you can still tell we're going dark, but there's a definite change in, in how the, in how harsh the transition is there. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. So, let's go ahead and move on to the highlights now. Now I'm going to go with 50-50 uh, between my Carnage and my, what was it, flame, Burning Orange, some blur, Burning Flaming, you know, it's all kind of the same thing, right? And make sure I got all the paint off. I'm going to lift it up a little bit closer here. Hopefully, there we go, about right there. And we want to remember where our line is, right? We want to keep that same, well, you can't see that. We want to keep that same line. So, as we brush downward, Remember how your triangle is shaped and keep that triangle. Keep those triangles. It, if your geometry starts to look goofy, that'll destroy your non-metallic metal effects pretty much faster than anything else will. That's something I learned the hard way over a long period of time. There we go. Now that is really subtle blends really nicely but you can start to see the hint of the orange there and now we're going to go ahead and do straight burning orange there we go starting to look starting to look nice okay now you want to hit oh it's about cut that brighter orange that we did last time in half there we go. D try not to trick the camera's focus into focusing on my hand here. And 
There we go. Now you can see I'm kind of pulling towards the edge. Because of the physics of your paintbrush, it'll leave less paint um, when you start as compared to where you let up. So it'll help your blends a little bit by leaving more paint in the end. So if your paint is fairly transparent, you'll be good to go. Whites are also kind of nice, like your reds, in that they help you blend because they don't cover anything. starting to look right, but you can see I ate up way too much of my orange. So we'll just apply the highest highlight real quick, and then we'll go back through, and just like we did with the shadows, we'll fight our way back towards the midtone. I'm just going to favor more towards the corners here. All right, and we definitely lost way too much orange. So you're kind of getting the illusion of starting an MM, but it definitely doesn't look like this yet because we have way too much white and not enough orange. So let's go ahead and put that orange back in there. I'm going to jump straight to the orange, the um, that is the 50-50 linen, white, and burning orange. And I'm going to dab along the edge. Let's see, I think you can still see me there. I cut into the white a little bit. That's not generally a huge deal. It's usually easier to uh, put the little edges on than it is to do anything else. So don't worry yet. We can side brush those edges. And now I'm going to go straight to the burning orange. It's like a ladder. You just keep going up and down and up and down and up and down until you get your blends exactly the way you want them. Okay. Putting back in straight burning orange. Remember, keep your triangles. Don't forget about your triangles. I hope my head's not in this. Looks like I'm safe. And now put in your red orange, our uh, carnage red burning orange mix to fix things back up and you can see we're getting there, we're getting there. It pays to be crisp with your um, NMM and it just to be crisp involves a lot of going back and forth and getting your lines. I'm sure at this point you're pretty sick of hearing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but that's that's kind of painting for you. Keep Keep plugging at it until you get it exactly the way you want it. And there you have it. That is the effect that produced all this. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. And I will keep practicing with this, uh, this video taking so that hopefully I can give you some even better tutorials on how to paint things like eyes and everything. Because this guy... This Bobby Jackson sculpt has some excellent huge eyes that I plan to pour all kinds of detail in. So stay tuned and I will try to provide you with that tutorial very uh, in the very near future. Thanks again.